What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we've got another new triple changer that we need to talk about in the Transformers trading card game. We've had a few in the set. Now, unfortunately, it is the only one that we've actually got remaining to talk about. But that's all right. Having one triple changer to talk about is better than none. So let's stop. Grab ourselves a nice cold beverage, or hot if that's what you prefer, and have a chat about Sergeant Springer, another common triple changer. Makes a nice change, of course, because they, they used to be kind of secret rare, and that was kind of a pain. So Sergeant Springer, then, is a 12-cost character, and remember that being a common means it is going to pop up in sealed play a bit more often. And the stats are the same in all three modes. Attack of 6, pretty high. Health of 16, pretty high. Defense of two, fine. Not particularly high. But all in all, we like it quite a lot. Now, it is also a specialist in all three modes, which means we open up things like Field Communicator. Hopefully, we'll have a chance to have a chat about those in a moment. And we definitely will. It's super relevant. So, if we start off in Alt Mode 1, which is when we will begin the game, when you flip to this mode, you may scrap an action from your hand if you do, draw two cards. That is a really, really nice skill. This is really rather good draw power. And we can see this by having a look at well, to some other cards. So we have a look at Bumblebee, for instance. Actually, no, let's go to Wave 2. Let's look at both Bumblebee and Megatron from Wave 2. Because they were very much parallel cards. Bumblebee Trusted Lieutenant in bot mode when you attack... You may scrap an action from your hand and draw two cards. Okay, that's kind of cool. And then Megatron, in bot mode, when you attack, you may scrap an upgrade from your hand and draw two cards. We could look at something like Dinobot Snarl from back in Wave 1 that does allow you to draw two cards, fine, but only if you've got zero cards in hand to begin with. So when you flip into this mode and you've got no cards in hand, you draw two cards. Well, that, that's not ideal, ladies and gentlemen. Here, you just scrap an action, you draw two cards. It's really nice draw power. Now you need to be playing enough actions to make it worth it. But the thing is, you are gaining a card advantage here. You are scrapping one card from your hand and drawing two, making it more likely that in future turns you will have enough stuff in hand to be able to have the cards in hand to use this same ability in the future. We absolutely love it. And then we get into Alt Mode 2, Sergeant Springer. When you flip to this mode, you may scrap an upgrade from your hand and draw two cards. It's exactly the same skill as in Alt Mode 1, except you're scrapping an upgrade rather than an action. Now... This I kind of like. I mean, if we go back to Bumblebee Trusted Lieutenant, you are rocking an action-heavy deck. The alt mode lets you play an extra action. The bot mode lets you scrap an action to draw cards. You are going full action, but sometimes you want upgrades. Here, you're actually gaining an advantage from upgrades and from actions, so it's worth having both. And being a triple changer, you don't just need to flip into alt mode, flip into bot mode, flip into alt mode, flip into bot mode. Because you've got both your alt modes here. Absolutely love the draw power you can get from Sergeant Springer here. Incidentally, as a quick side note here, Springer did actually come around previously as a triple changer in Wave 2, where it was a secret rare, or super rare as they're called in this game. So, you know, big up for consistency. And then if we get into bot mode here, this is where it gets really fun. When you have seven or more cards in hand and you flip to bot mode, you may play an action, then you may play an upgrade. Now, during your turn, you're allowed to play one action and one upgrade, as long as it's not your first turn of the game. But here, you're playing a second action and a second upgrade, so it's not a million miles away from actually letting you have two turns. Now, you still only get the one attack. You still only get the one tap skill. But you get the second upgrade. You get the second action. I absolutely adore this. 
This gives you so much more stuff. Now, you've got to have seven or more cards in hand, and that's a bit of a pain, but remember that both your alt modes let you essentially draw an extra card. You're drawing two, but you're scrapping one, so you're ending up with one more card than you started with. But the thing here is you've got to be really careful about the kind of draw power you're using. Using pep talk as a straight draw two? Yes. Using universal network access if you've got a star spare? Yes. Using Equipment Enthusiast to draw if you got lots of upgrades down. Yes. Using System Reboot? No! Now, I'm not saying no per se, although I literally just did say no. What I mean is that we want to get up to seven cards in hand. What we don't really want to be doing here is getting rid of any cards in hand we want to be doing straight draw so something like system reboot that discards your hand and then draws four yeah i mean don't get me wrong right if you've got zero cards in hand you end up with four more than you did that's good if you've got one card in hand you end up with three more than you did that's good but generally speaking, what we want to do is be playing cards that just draw extra rather than resetting our hand. Similarly, you could play something like Work Overtime, but the problem is it draws till you've got four cards in hand. So if you've got three cards in hand, you're drawing one. If you've got four or more, you're drawing none. And the thing you've got to remember here is you're going for seven. Seven is the goal. You want seven cards in hand. So straight draw rather than resetting your hand got to be the way to go here okay but the thing is once you get this rolling you're absolutely loving it two actions two upgrades per turn it opens up a lot more options than you might have had previously and a lot of these end up as a specialist you see the thing that really makes me over the top loving sergeant springer rather than thinking it's kind of cool is the fact that you are a specialist, which means you got access to field communicator, multi-tool, and multi-mission gear. Now, field communicator is my favorite of the three. It lets you play the top card of your deck or scrap it. Well, you scrap it regardless, but you may play it if you wish. Multi-mission gear, when you put it on a specialist, you may play an action. Multi-tool, when you put it on a specialist, you may play an upgrade. And this is when Sergeant Springer turns into <laughs> kind of territory. Because even before you get round to the bot mode skill, and let's not kid ourselves, right? You're not going to start off on turn one, flick to bot mode. Hey, I'm playing an extra action and upgrade. No, that's not going to happen. But what is going to happen is you're going to be drawing into these, I mean, potentially up to nine specialist cards. Because you can play three of each. And then when you play them, you're playing extra cards. And this is going to do two things. Number one, it's actually going to make it more likely that you draw extra cards so you get closer to having seven cards in hand, which makes you closer to using your bot mode skill. And number two, it just lets you do more stuff. So let's say for argument's sake, you want to play pep talk to draw cards, but you've also got a rage character on the field and you want to use marksmanship. Yeah, still one of my favorite cards. You know I love cheeky damage by now. Well, the good news is that you're now able to play two. Either you end up in bot mode with seven cards in your hand to play a second action. Or you go ahead and attach multi-mission gear to a specialist and you play a second action. Either is fine. But also, playing something like pep talk makes it more likely that you're going to draw into something like marksmanship. And not having to choose between draw and cheeky damage or draw and hand disruption. That is what makes this so good. Now, you are a leader which, and you are an Autobot, which means you do have access to Matrix of Leadership, which, which is fine for you. Helps out your other bots more. I'm more of a fan of Field Communicator as a utility, but it is still there as an option. Being a truck is not quite so good. You could always try using something like Battering Ram, which I'm kind of a fan of. I mean, I did reveal it, so I'm a little bit biased. Which does flip your opponent's cards, which is quite nice. You know, flip them over, see what you get. Or maybe you want to play around with a little bit of the old team-up tactics. You know, it's not the worst card we've ever seen. If you've got a truck out, you repair two damage. 
Although, incidentally, if you play it with a car as well, then you could actually draw two cards off it, and that could be kind of cool as well. So do do bear that in mind. As for Helicopter, nah. I'm still not a huge fan. They, they've still not gotten the love that we want yet. Worth pointing out that we do have multi-missile pod now that can only go on planes or helicopters... And you can put up to one in a weapon slot. And when you attack, you may scrap it and do cheeky damage. It's, it's fine. I'm not offended by multi-missile pod. But I do feel like we waited way too long to actually get some love for helicopters for that to be all we've got. But I don't worry too much about it. No, trucks and helicopters aren't the best types to have. But you've got a lot of draw power. You can play extra stuff. And you're a specialist, so you can play the extra stuff through being a specialist. I really like Sergeant Springer. It's a 12 cost. It is expensive. I get that. But you can be playing extra actions and upgrades at a far, far higher rate than you would expect in your average deck. And that makes me kind of excited. But I'd like to know if you're excited, so let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy. That's where we talk about games. And do please consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some weekly bonus podcasts, all kinds of fun stuff. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.